Business plan template is searched approximately 163,000 times a month. I'm here to tell you to stop searching because in today's video, I'll be showing you how to make the ultimate business plan. Business plans are absolutely essential for any business. Why? Well, because a solid business plan will allow you to rigorously assess idea feasibility, research and find insights on target markets, and assess your competition. These are all things that you need to do in order to make your business as successful as it can be. And when the time comes, investors will rely heavily on your business plan to evaluate the feasibility of your business before funding it. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as we release new videos every week that will help you build your business. Oh, and stay tuned to the end of this video when I share a little gift from me to you. To you. Let's get into it. The first part of every business plan is the executive summary. The executive summary's purpose is to distill everything in the business plan into a single page and give a high level overview of your business. This is like the, the Canadian tuxedo almost, like a blazer over a flannel shirt. Admittedly, that one page constraint can make it seem like squeezing in a lot of information will be impossible, but trust me, it's not. What I like to do is break down each section of the business plan into one or two sentences to ensure that everything is succinct and easy to read. Here's what your business plan's executive summary should include. Your business concept, business goals and vision, product differentiation and description, your target market, your marketing plan, your current financial state, projected financial state, the ask, so if you're asking for money, how much are you asking for, and your team. For more ideas on how to identify your target market, be sure to check out our last video on how to build a brand in the right hand corner right up here. Now let's move on to a biggie, your company overview. This section of your business plan should include two fundamental questions. Who are you and what do you plan to do? Answering these questions provides an introduction to why you're in business, why you're different, what you have going for you, and why you'd be a good investment. To answer these questions, you wanna include these components in your overview. Your business structure, for example, is your business a sole proprietorship, a general partnership, a limited partnership, or is it an incorporated company? This can often be visualized using an organizational chart. You also wanna share the nature of your business. What are you selling? Now specify the industry. Are you in fashion, electronics? What does your landscape currently look like and where could it be heading? You're gonna also wanna list your team, including key personnel and their salaries. If I was doing this right now, it would just be me, but I would also wanna include future plans for scaling up my company. So I can see here that you've got four years of working experience as a good boy. Can you start on Monday? Or I could just leave it as me. You can also use this section to highlight background information on your business or its history. Get creative and be authentic in this part. This is where you can really draw people in and have them invested in how it all started for you. So I thought it might be good to provide an example here. So sit with me, the dog rescue that I volunteer for and run the store for has been operating since 2012. And since then we've gone on to help over 1200 dogs. We do not discriminate based off of breed, medical history or age. So every dog has a chance to find their forever home through our rescue. And that was very important from the get go. And we also do not have anyone that's making a salary. So it's entirely volunteer based. Um, it's all by the good graces of our community and everyone that's out there willing to put in money, time and effort to help these dogs. A big component of your company overview will be outlining your business's vision, mission and values. I'm gonna do a deep dive into this one with you. To define your values, start thinking about all the people that your company is accountable to, including owners, employees, suppliers, customers, and investors. Now I want you to consider how you'd like to conduct business with each of them. As you make a list, your core values should start to emerge. For example, IKEA lists some of its values as humbleness and willpower, leadership by example, and daring to be different. Now, the mission statement. Your statement should explain in a convincing manner and ideally a single sentence why your business exists. For example, Shopify's mission statement is make commerce better for everyone. 
It's the why behind everything we do, and it's crystal clear and needs no further explanation. Next, craft your vision statement. What impact do you envision your business having on the world when you've achieved your vision? Make sure you phrase that impact using assertive language. For example, Nike's vision statement is bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. Finally, include your business objectives, both short and long-term. I like to keep my goals on track by ensuring that they are smart, meaning specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Now get ready to do some serious work as the next part of this plan will be diving into market research. For the marketing analysis section, you want to be including an overview of your potential market, an analysis of your business's position within that market, and an overview of the competitive landscape. I'm not exaggerating when I say that your market can make or break your business. If you choose the right market with the right products, one with plenty of customers who understand and need your product, you'll most likely have a head start on success. When diving into potential markets, you will need to be looking into as much relevant independent data as possible to validate your business. This can be a huge task, but I find that breaking it down into two starting points, it then becomes much more manageable. First, I seek to identify my ideal customer profile. A customer profile should be a detailed factual description of your target audience. For example, if you're targeting millennial customers in the US, I would first start by looking at government data about the size of that group. Secondly, I research relevant industry trends and trajectories. I like to approach this section by going to Google Trends and using keywords as a jumping off point and then diving into more granular data. For example, say that I wanted to start a Halloween mask business and I wanted to know the trends of that industry. I would go to Google Trends, type in Halloween masks, and then get granular on the results page, looking at things like where this industry has peaked outside of seasonal times. I would then dive into what made it peak and have a look at some of the search terms and show shifts and changes in the popularity of the industry. From here, I would then dive into sources such as government statistics offices, industry associations, academic research, and respected news outlets covering the industry to get a robust view and understanding of the landscape. Now, when assessing my business's position in the market, I like to use a SWOT analysis to break things down. Using a grid format, you wanna start listing out the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to your business. I like using SWOT because you can clearly see the positive and negative internal and external factors that may impact your business visually. Now, the competitor analysis. For this analysis, I like to include a list of a few companies that I would consider direct competitors. And then I state how I plan to differentiate my product and business from theirs. Okay, now we're into the products and services section. You wanna provide more detailed information here on your products and state why your product stands out in the market. Like before, we want things to be succinct and visual. Patents, copyrights, and trademarks that you own or have applied for should also be listed in this section. In the customer segmentation section, you wanna give a holistic overview of your ideal customer. A lot of this information should be clear to you after you've done preliminary research on your target market. When talking about your customers in this section, you wanna include a number of general and specific demographic characteristics, such as where they live, their age range, their level of education, how much they earn, their values, beliefs, or opinions. Ideally, you should be specific enough that it's very clear who you're trying to reach with your business, and even more importantly, why you've made the choices you have based on who your customers are and what they value. Now we should be ready to move on to highlighting your marketing plan. Your plan here should outline your current and future strategies for marketing your product to your ideal customers. For example, say that I have a phone case company and I know that a lot of my audience is on TikTok. I will show that I plan to leverage that knowledge into creating a paid campaign on that platform using content specifically created for my key customers. I will then also include how I plan to measure the success of that campaign. Now, although sometimes marketing is seen as purely promotional, your plan should include information on the following four key subjects. Price, so how much does your product cost? Product, 
what are you selling and how do you plan to differentiate yourself in the market? Place, where will you sell your products? And finally, promotion. How will you get your products in front of your ideal customer? By including these, you are showing investors and yourself that you have thought about every facet of how your marketing strategy will be effective in driving customers to your business. Now onto our logistics and operations plan. You really wanna cover all parts of your business operation in this section, including where you get the raw materials you need for production or where your products are produced. Highlighting if you'll make, manufacture, wholesale, or drop ship your product then stating how long it takes to produce your products and get them shipped. You'll also want to touch on how you might handle a busy season or an unexpected spike in demand. Discussing facilities, for example, where will you and your team members work? Do you have plans to have a physical retail space? If so, where? outlining the tools and technology that you require in order to be up and running. This includes everything from computers to light bulbs to everything in between. Finally, discuss the specifics on how you're handling inventory. For example, how much will you keep on hand and where will it be stored? How will you ship it to partners if required? And how will you keep track of incoming and outgoing inventory? This section should demonstrate that you've got a solid understanding of your supply chain and a strong contingency plan in case of any potential uncertainty. Finally, we're gonna end with the financial plan. Now, I know what you're thinking, boring, but I assure you this will be an important step in your business plan. The level of detail required in your financial plan will really depend on your audience and goals. However, typically you wanna include three major views of your financials, an income statement, a balance sheet and a cash flow statement. Your income statement is designed to give your readers a look into your revenue sources and expenses over a given period of time. Your balance sheet should offer a look at how much equity you have in your business. On one side, you'll list all of your business's assets, so what you own, and on the other side, all of your liabilities, so what you owe. This will provide a snapshot of your business's shareholder equity, which is calculated as assets minus liabilities equals equity. Now your cash flow statement is similar to your income statement with one important difference. It takes into account when revenues are collected and when expenses are paid. It can be especially helpful to forecast your cash flow statement to identify gaps or negative cash flow and adjust operations as required. If you're worried right now about how to best format this out because numbers and math are not really your thing, don't be put off by this section. Shopify has created a set of formatted sheets specifically for helping you formulate this section of your business plan. By taking the time to develop your business plan, you're actually achieving a number of extremely beneficial things for your business. A business plan will allow you to evaluate your business idea. For your business to be successful, it needs to be tangible. This plan will help solidify that. It will also help you plan for the next phase of your business and help you think about scaling and scope. It will then empower you to start thinking about hiring additional staff or even building partnerships. Additionally, it will clarify strategies, goals, and tactics and make them actionable. Finally, it will help you if you're looking to secure funds for your business, whether it be from a bank or an investor. As promised, I did say that I would have a little gift for you and that is my ultimate business template. You're welcome. And hey, if you did use our template to create your own business plan, let us know what learnings you had from doing that. Did you find a new customer base or a cool new market to tap into? Let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Uh, okay, let us, let us know. If I had a piece of lettuce, that'd be fantastic. <laughs>